So that led me into this like deep dive of like, okay, should you be naked in front of your spouse more or less? Yeah. Because we're naked in front of each other all the time. All the time. And yeah, yeah like, you get off- remember, you get offended if I if you don't get, sleep naked. Yeah, if I don't couples sleep are naked. meant to sleep naked yeah. with each other. Yeah. And uh I feel like our sex life is incredible. Yeah. So we definitely don't I wouldn't I mean we're naked. I mean there's most Sundays we'll just be naked all day. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a there's been yeah. Well, not recently because we've had family. We have had family here. <laughs> It'd be a little weird, but. But we'll wake up. We'll go suntan outside naked. Have yeah. our coffee while we're naked. Come in. You'll yeah. open cards and play video games naked with your friends. Why do you have to make me sound like that? <laughs> we're live hey another exuberant awesome <laughs> episode of a kick-ass love story with your hosts Paige Van Zandt and Austin Vanderford the incredible Dennis Vanderford playing yep. with his monkey on the couch yep and he laid and down he's laying down <laughs> it doesn't take him long for when we get in here to just fall asleep on the couch <laughs> I know at least we know he's comfortable yeah all right so I wanted to kick us off today Okay. Now, I have a few things I thought we should just go back and talk about from our last podcast updates, this yeah, and that. Yeah. And then I had a few little fun little tidbits. A couple fun I little things. We could, fun little things that we could get into. Okay. Um. All right. I have sad news, I guess, oh, first. No. Oh, no. Oh, well, other than the fact that your face is bleeding right now. Yeah, I got a, uh, <clears throat> I got a little... So, I, I had sparring couple hours ago right yeah right and, before uh, this yeah i got a headbutt we clashed heads and well a nose headbutt and anyways i cut my nose and uh oh you gotta wipe it it's dripping on your is face it? Oh, yeah. yeah so so i'm going to be wiping my nose because we can't can't miss the it's dripping yeah yeah can't skip the podcast or <laughs> just this hold gushing. it on your yeah face. it was good for a while but uh yeah but it it <laughs> It's you perfect, want to get you a right? It's a kick-ass love story. Wow, Maybe you should just band- take your shirt off. I don't want you to drip blood on your Palm Angel shirt. I won't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, it, it plays into it, right? It, a kick-ass love story. It plays into a kick-ass love yeah. story. I'll just warn you anytime you it's dripping it's down your drip. face. It was doing good for a little while, and and I did have a bandaid on, but the bandaid makes it kind of hard to see. Did so, it actually? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or so, just distracting. It was a little distracting. Too. All right. And I think when you wiped it, you wiped the like the scab. The scab that had started. The coagulation. Uh, who were you sparring with today? I was sparring with uh Shoeface, who is in the PFL tournament at two oh five for um Oh, for the PFL. Yeah, for the PFL. Okay, the cool. million dollar tournament. So he's getting ready for a fight and uh, asked me to help him out today. So did that. Had some great rounds. Unfortunately, yeah, a little bonk like in the first round. Oh, of no. Of course. So just put some Vaseline on. and. Luckily, and, it doesn't uh, look bad enough to get stitches. No, no, and it's not. And, and thankfully, too, it didn't like break my nose or anything. It's just little cut there so you also said damian maya was at the gym today oh yeah he he i saw damian maya today yeah he came in um i'm assuming his kids and uh oh cool and one of his friends or something but it was kind of cool he's he's a jujitsu legend and and uh had a really good career in the ufc too nice got to watch my sexy little husband spar (laughs) yeah (laughs) okay that wasn't the sad news though that i had for everyone Last podcast, um, we filmed on your birthday. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are drinking out of my birthday cup. Oh, I am. I am now a 29 plus one. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Officially 30 years old. Yep. And I got, I had an incredible birthday. Did you? <laughs> did you really have an incredible birthday? I did cry a little bit on it. A little? Not happy tears either. <laughs> It was like one of those like, what am I doing with my life? Yes. Because then you look back on the last 10 years. And I'm like, a failure. What am I doing with my life? I'm <laughs> so much. old now. Well, because I look back on the last 10 years and it's like, okay, I did a lot of cool shit yeah. in the last 10 years. It's like, okay, can I really do that much cool shit in my 30s again? Yeah, it's 
not like your life is over. You're only 30 years old. Well, I look back and I'm, I'm like, 34. look at all the cool stuff I did. I'm not doing any of that right now. Well, I guess, no, I do have a cool podcast with my husband. Yeah, so. you got a podcast. You've got a movie coming up. You've got... I married you. You married me. You have a lot 20s. of potential things that we can't even say on here come up and you know what but i will say this i kind of dropped the ball on your birthday and I, I didn't make it as special <laughs> it did make it to midnight and i was like so where are my flowers or yeah. my present yeah i was not i admittedly i was not and even laying in bed i was like gosh damn it i was not a good husband what on, did you get for your birthday i got cards how many i got a lot and we don't need to say. <laughs> you, got I got a lot of cards, but you did get a really nice bottle of tequila from your father. That's true. Your dad got yeah. me a really nice bottle of tequila. Yes, yes, very nice bottle of tequila. But I'm the one who picked that son that's, of a bitch out. Okay, that's very nice. Um, I, I am very excited about my tequila, especially because starting next week I will be filming kick ass cocktails oh, with Paige Van Zant. Hell yeah! And I am going to be sharing my favorite cocktails. Spoiler alert. A yeah. lot of them are going to have tequila. <laughs> <laughs> tequila is my drink of choice, yeah. but I also have cocktails with some other other great liquors. Jo jokes on everyone else. This was because you struck me. <laughs> you, that, giving you domestic a violence is not funny. Yes, I know. I know. But when, <laughs> not, when you're when you are a fighting couple, it's not really. It's not really I think it's easy. worse. Is it? Yeah. Okay, I think it'd be okay, worse yeah. if we were beating the shit out of each other at home. Yeah, that is true. Because we are. Well, I think it'd be worse for you to be beating me up. Well, yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, but the sad news is I'm 30. Kind of feel like I've been 30 since I was like 18, though. Yeah. My career took off pretty quickly. Had a lot of. And you you've know, always you've always been the mature one in your family, and it seemed like whenever there's an issue, it's always like onto you. Yeah, so. but I also put that pressure on myself. Where yeah. I know I can take care of it and I can yeah. handle it and I will do a better job than anybody else because <laughs> I care. Because you're a control freak. Because <laughs> I'm a control freak and yes. I have a hard time delegating. Yes, you really do. But that led to, gosh, a spiral effect of me thinking like, all right, you being in your, you know, 30s. Yeah. Me is, personally or? Well, no. Yes, you. Yeah. You personally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, men in their 30s, date girls in their 20s. And I'm like, wow, is my husband going to leave me now that I'm not a hot 20 year old? <sighs> no. Yeah. What's going to keep you around? This is good. This is something you have to worry about now. And, <gasps> no, and, uh, I was giving you the opportunity to pump me up. Well, I I, I don't think I really need to pump you up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I think you're pumped. Okay. All yeah. right. All right, so yeah, birthdays. I had a great birthday. But we no, had, I am not going to leave you for a young twenty, year young old. hot twenty year old. All right, no. No. I'm taking the cards with me if you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Deal. 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 All that right. makes sense. Yeah. Deal. That, that makes that's sense. A, that's a deal. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. Great birthdays. Um. <laughs> I shared this on Instagram. I go out to the mailbox. Yes. Because you know your family was like, "Hey, did you get anything in the mail today, or did you get anything at your door today?" Yeah. And so I kept. By the way, sorry, sorry what? to interrupt you because this is so funny. So you did get flowers almost at midnight on your Literally, birthday. Literally, because yeah. your family kept te Nick and Natalie kept texting me, and they're like, "Hey, did you get anything at the door? Did you yes. get anything?" And so like I'm eagerly checking the mailbox, and then at like eleven o'clock. Which is crazy that a flower delivery company I know, came at, at 11. 11. Yeah. But I got the most gorgeous bouquet of flowers literally an hour after I interrogated you. I, I was like, that, honey. See, and that's <laughs> the point of this. So the ring camera, you know, we, we have a security uh, system. And, yeah. and so I'm, I'm watching and we have motion at like 11 something. I'm like, who the hell is at our at house? Door. Yeah. And uh, so I see what it is and I go out and I see his flower just... I was so close since we had just gotten into a fight. I was so close to claiming that I was the one. You who were got the one who sent flowers. him. And there yeah. was an incredible card, and it was not from you. So. Yes, and I almost took the card off, and, and I almost <laughs> did the whole thing. That would have been awful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I did get you. Sorry, one more thing. I did get you a really beautiful bouquet of roses not too long ago, you did. and they're just sitting in our closet, not well, being no, appreciated. They're 
hold, they are displayed with my prized possessions, my okay, purses. Yeah, I guess so. I have a purse okay. collection. Okay, okay. And they deserve flowers. Okay. And if you would have read the care instructions, you're supposed to keep them out of direct sunlight. Oh, okay. They're like they're preserved. So you are appreciating. Yes, okay. if they're they're preserved roses, so they need yeah. to stay. They'll last for um up to a year. They're from you. They're incredible. Yeah, yeah they are. Um, they are but incredible. Would I get those? Um, what for was... Valentine's Day. That was last month. Yeah, I must have. Yeah. yeah so, okay. anyways, they're supposed to be kept out of direct sunlight. Okay. And I was like, okay, this is perfect. I'll display them with all my beautiful purses. Yeah. I think it looks great. It does, yeah. And it, our closet's not just a closet. That, that's we true. We have a pretty grand closet. Yeah, yeah we do. Um, okay, but back to my funny checking the mailbox. Yes. So I'm like going out to the mailbox and I get this letter and it's addressed to me, but there is not a lot of like... When it's um spam mail, yeah. it'll usually say like, oh, apply for this credit card yeah, today yeah, yeah, or yeah. sell your house today, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so I'm like, oh, this is must be... Um, something for my birthday yeah so i opened it it was for my birthday but this is so funny too who was it from the morgue it was from my fucking funeral home so funny they sent me a letter on my 30th birthday saying there is no better time to plan your funeral to take the burden of the cost of a memorial off of your family start planning today since when do morgues send 30 year old yeah, birthday that's cards crazy saying plan your funeral today yeah that's uh it's morbid uh, it's morbid i was ha- so close to calling them yeah because it's a local funeral home yeah and saying like what the fuck <laughs> it's you, so funny you send me <laughs> my birthday. i'm supposed to plan <laughs> my funeral on my 30th birthday like yeah. i'm already depressed about leaving my 20s and like you know, I'm an official adult now. Yeah. And now you're saying I need to start planning my funeral. Like, it literally is all downhill from 30. No, it is not. And not to get morbid, but so my my father was just here for our birthdays yes. and, and stuff. And he's a uh, he's a funny guy. We were really close to having him on the podcast. We but, were. But a little TMI, he had uh, some bowel <laughs> issues. That's stomach flu. Yeah. I think he, he got food poisoning. I think he had the same shit that I had. A week ago. Okay. Yeah. Continue. Anyways, I digress. Uh, he is a, a funny guy. Yes, As he is. you can imagine, he's my father. <laughs> yeah. <a> funny guy. <laughs> Whatever um, you get it from. But he's, you know, a, he's probably the toughest, like, most badass guy I know. He was a door gunner uh, for a helicopter in Vietnam. And, and uh, yeah. he was one of those guys who he loved the... Uh, he loved the war. He so, loved the military. And, and he, he loved says if he could go back and fight again for his country he would today yeah yeah i've i've had to talk him out of uh going to fight in war various wars going around the country right now because he wants to go do that so um anyways he was so he was here for our birthdays and and you know you're talking about being old and and all this and and uh and he's he's got a good (laughs) sense of humor and and all that but so then we got talking you know again kind of morbid about death stuff and and uh anyways he so he goes through phases he want he starts watching things that he's in a viking big viking phase right now and uh he to the point where he got a viking tattoo he's you know my dad's 76 but he's still getting tattoos and, and uh crazy guy Anyways, but he, he's now this has been probably for I remember it was a New Year's Eve. It must have been maybe 10 years ago. Okay. And uh, we were a little inebriated and uh, by a fire and and he's going on and he's pretty drunk at this point. In fact, I, I believe he fell down <laughs> um, in front of the fire. But he started going on about. When he dies, he wants me to build a little raft. <laughs> and put him in the raft catch it on he, fire <laughs> he wants you to set it on fire and push him out into the cook inlet in the Nilchik where i'm from so with all of his uh military stuff and so so uh so, the, the point of the whole thing is 
uh, his funeral would be very cheap. You know, I, oh my I, I just gotta, I gotta Are you fashion. allowed to do that? I don't really know. I, I there's, yeah, I, I would imagine there's probably. You could probably get away with it in Alaska though. Y- right. Yes. And that's, that's the other thing. But, you know, he still maintains to this day that this is what he wants. So I guess I'm going to. Uh, at one point, I guess I'll build a, a <laughs> build raft. a boat. It's just shove me in there while you're at it. I, yeah, so, yeah. So, anyways, now you, you could always do something like that, you know. Yeah, something cool. Yeah. Well, thanks. I don't know if that made me feel better or <laughs> yeah, not. I know. That was kind of morbid. Yeah. <laughs> that was a little kind bit crazy. morbid. Yeah. Okay. Um. Any other updates we have? Let's just change the subject. Um, oh, you did. You got a a really nice birthday gift, but it's it's not here. You were gonna unpackage it. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah! It's out in the out in the living yeah, room. Yeah, you'll have to get that because okay. that's cool. We'll get that here in a minute. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm 30. I got flowers. Oh yeah, right at 11 p.m. I got flowers for the last hour of my birthday. Yep. Got a funeral letter. Some great time with our family. You got a really nice mug that I'm drinking I'm 29 out of. Plus one, <laughs> and then I got a wine glass that says "Are you 30?" And then you have boxes, maybe, or it's like yes, no. And bitch, I might be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I feel like 30 is just a turning of a page for women. Yeah. And it's different. Like, you know, and I, yeah. So when you were kind of going on about you were unhappy because for one, uh, you were unhappy uh, with me a little bit on your birthday because Every decision, I always said, oh, well, it's your birthday, yes. babe. What this do you is what pisses me off. Yeah. Was This is what pissed me off the most. I was like, okay, like, yeah, it's my birthday. Where do you want to go to dinner? And you were like, it's your birthday. Just pick somewhere. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. What do you want to do? It's your yeah. birthday. What do you want to do? I, I just felt as if there could have been a tiny bit more effort into you saying like, yeah. hey, it's your birthday. Let me take you to your favorite restaurant. Yeah, And you I could have taken me to 234 or... Like, hey, it's your birthday. Let me take you to Mexican. Let's get you some margaritas because you love tequila. Like, there well, could have been. I did do that. No, I picked the restaurant and it was awful. <laughs> it was awful. Well, yeah, we, we, her birthday was on a Taco Tuesday. It was Taco it was, Tuesday. It was kind of loud at this particular place. And, and she usually does love this place, but. And I'm not necessarily a fan. But. No. And I think that's where I was like, you know what? Like, you're not having a good time. I could tell you didn't like your food. It was just like, well, damn it. <laughs> well, I ate all of my food. You always eat all of your food. That's true. Always. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but no, I, the point of this too uh-huh. is, uh, um, you know, because for a guy, like, I don't really give a shit. I mean, but, and you don't really either. No, but and I don't a, want gifts. I don't yeah. want anything like that. But I was like. I don't know what I want to do. Like, cause yeah. I'm already don't really care to for birthdays. Yeah. So I was like, I just, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know. Yeah. And then it got down to it. And I was like, you know, he, my husband could have got me flowers at least. Could have been better. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I'm That's sorry. A, no, great birthday. It's over now. Yeah. Um, I feel like you were going to say something else I had coming up. That's exciting. Ooh. I don't know. Remember. Okay, we don't yeah. have any fight updates. I did want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Still, I haven't gotten my contract. As far as I know, the fight's still 100% though. So I'm set on that and yeah. training and getting ready. Yeah. Um, uh, you don't have any fight updates, unfortunately. We're just kind of trying to yeah. get an opponent. The uh, I've been told like a couple different things. So we're just, yeah, it seems like May could be June. But That'd be really unfortunate. Yeah, it's just just because you've been ready to fight for ever, pretty much forever. Yeah, I mean, so I'm ready. Like, I'm ready now. If someone were to call and say, "Hey, next week, then I'm ready to go." And you're so, only getting older. Hey, <laughs> f you. But my uh, yeah, what no. Should, but I'm ready. What to, we should do is call like Garrett or Malky on this, our managers, and yeah. just, like have it on speaker and say like, "Hey, like." What's going on in our yeah, careers? What the, hell? What the yeah. hell is going on? No, I agree. Do you have a fight for me or not? Yeah. So unfortunately, no updates there. But yeah, uh, I want to get into the gist of what I actually wrote down for the podcast. Okay. So we talked about all that stuff. So I was on Instagram. Oh, I have one more update. Sorry. Oh, okay. One more from my mom. Oh, oh yes. Yep. So we know she was having issues with her 
boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> no, not issues. I love she I love how we put our uh, families, family on our family shit out here. I text my mom this morning. You gotta, I gotta read this. I text my mom, right? Yeah. And I say, uh, not good morning, nothing. Any updates on the jealousy front? How do you feel that now that you're home? Any worries <laughs> about the new boss? How was your boyfriend while you were gone? Oh my god. The gosh. podcast needs to know. That is so funny. So that's what she woke up to. And I text her at like, you know, 8 a.m. our time. So yeah. it's 5 a.m. her time. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, I'll just read it. Yeah. Well, Joel was amazing with the jealousy issue and then an emoji with the star eyes. Yeah. He made sure I was comfortable and just had me work with him and the other female so i was able to get comfortable and not feel insecure mm. i started a devotional on jealousy anytime i have a tiny thought or worry that come up i give him or her a compliment either in my mind or an actual compliment okay cute mom i also remind myself that there is no such thing as sacredy sacredy i'm not really sure what she means by that one okay um so let's say a work affair did happen. I would just move on. Maybe oh. it would hurt for a bit, but I know I am strong and I would be fine alone or I would find a new boyfriend. LOL. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> well, and the, hey, and if Joel is listening to this too, then he, you know, Wait, he's, yeah, yeah. he's hearing this. No, and, and then he, she goes on. Joel is so amazing while I was gone. He took care of the puppies. He painted the beach house and he also had all the pups and picked me up at the airport. So he went and drove all the way to the airport to pick her up. But like, okay. gosh, it must have been like 2 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Now uh, the viewers have met your mom and she is a, a very tiny and very sweet. Yes. The sweetest uh, woman. Sweet. So. She's just like a sweet little baby. And part of the yeah. time I feel like I'm her mom. Uh, it's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I just feel like I need Not like, part of the time. <laughs> that is the relationship. I need to baby her and yeah. guide her and point her in the right direction. Yes. So give her some advice so that was the update from my mom and her jealousy issue now that she's home so and i was just thinking about this too it's so funny about this you know we kind of we, we say some stuff tell our families uh stuff on here a little bit yes. <laughs> but, but uh recently i had told the story about walking in on my parents Oh yeah, doing it. Making love, yeah. Oh, so I, have... I texted my mom and said, "Oh yeah, you guys were on the podcast last <laughs> You'll episode." You'll have to listen. And she was like, "Oh, MG, I'm so excited." Because <laughs> you know? my talk. mom is, you know, and uh, it's like, "Yeah, you'll have to listen to it. It was really great." And and so then she had asked, she's like, "What? Uh, so what? Uh, what were you guys talking about?" Or what? I, and she's still oblivious. Still has oblivious. no idea. And, and uh but i never got an update on it so i don't uh -oh. know i'm not sure <laughs> not she sure heard she no i know or she she's listens. just embarrassed i she, know she listens she comments she's commented on all of our videos and i comment back to her yeah so uh but yeah Sorry, so i don't well, know if maybe she was she's embarrassed and she hasn't said anything your mom here. doesn't seem like the kind to get embarrassed by no that. no embarrassing but, enough i did my well no no, I don't know if you want to know this. Yeah. I was in high school. Yeah. My grandpa walked in on me. Oh, jeez. That was rough. Yeah. That yeah, was I rough. I could have went without hearing that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no. Sorry. Uh, uh, yes. So, <laughs> well, I'm not going to say this part. But, say it. Uh, oh, I was going to say, you know, I, I don't, they couldn't have been that embarrassed. I did, you know, when we were kids, like, uh, the T, which I, I'm sure they still do, but some of the locked uh oh yeah on the tv, TV stands <laughs> yeah or no no some of the you, you get on like uh dish network or oh, whatever yes. and channels are locked like rated r or whatever mm -hmm. is locked and and uh so we were you know always trying to unlock these because we, we wanted to watch crazy stuff i'm and, sure you did and uh <laughs> yeah yeah so but this time it was me my brother and my sister watching it together not porn okay. no but we were trying to watch like uh friday or okay. something because all anything rated r was, was locked. locked yeah so there was something on and and so we're like going through codes one two three four the blah 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 <laughs> Finally, I, for whatever, whatever came to me, I was like, wait, try 6969. <laughs> and I put it in and it unlocked it. So we, yeah, had access to rated R stuff you for a little while. Access and, to the real naughty stuff. Yeah. And uh, eventually everything was locked again. 
and we <laughs> never my parents and i never talked, never about, talked it. about it so they obviously knew i cracked the code but did anyways. you could you see anything of like the recently watched on there or like <sighs> i don't remember recommendations i don't remember but what i do remember being kind of funny was um uh so where we were at so we we're living in a trailer house and in our, our living there was our living room and then the hallway and my parents room was at the very end uh we'd be watching something i would click on something uh in the living room but the way our in or our tv was set up whatever you were watching in the living room was on every single tv got it so <laughs> i like i like seeing like a like Harry Twatter and the or whatever it's like clicked on it you know and I'm like 14 13 so it's like porn and I didn't really realize that it was going to be playing in my parents room too so I'm like a kid watching it watching and it's Harry on. Twatter <laughs> yeah. and it's on it's on in the back room too and my mom came out and yeah, I got in trouble for that but. was that your cho- choice as a kid Harry Twatter okay so back <laughs> back then too you know like uh dish network and whatever uh-huh. they had all the like they had all the i remember once you got past like all the hbo then it was uh all the x-rated all the x-rated all in a stuff. row and it was always funny stuff like harry twatter <laughs> and the and then there was like like really funny names really funny names like the clever ones like these kids like new age kids you don't understand yeah they what, don't understand what tv was like they have no idea <laughs> back in the day yeah and how you picked your movies yep and you'd have uh, not little baby austin Peter Ford <sighs> watching harry twatter the hell did we get in on, in on this? I don't the know. The hell did this come from? I have no and idea. And now my mom's going to hear this too. And gosh damn it. Well, that's all right. Yeah. That's a right. kick ass love, love story. Love story. Yeah, love yeah. story. Okay. Sexual stuff, love. Sex, yeah. love. We, there's, we could get even more deep dive. I'm like, so I want intended on this to be like really raunchy, really in depth sex talk between a couple. Okay. I feel like I still have to like ease you into it. But I, mean, I think this is our 20th episode, Oh, by cool. the way. Yeah. Episode 20. Ooh. Good job, babe. Nice. Um, So TB, TBD. Okay. Or not. Yeah. Event or T, TBA. To be announced. Okay. To be announced. When we're going to get real raunchy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah, All I, right. I, I think we've done a decent job of this. Scratch the surface. Yeah. All right. Uh, I was on Instagram. Okay. And this is going to be more relationship, more analytical okay relationship talk so okay. i'm on instagram scrolling and i follow some like motivational things so like instagram had recommended a video for me and it was um a guy must have had a relationship yeah um podcast or okay. something to do with like relationships in this and i wish i would have saved the video to show or play the actual what he was saying but yeah. to put it into context basically he was like you know you need to stop changing in front of your spouse stop changing like stop dressing in front of them really so you're supposed to like have your partner see you naked less so then it like leaves something to be desired for so it's like they're not seeing you go from your baggy clothes to your nice clothes it's like you walk out and all of a sudden you're like a dime piece and you're looking all great and i think he had said it a little bit better but i could not agree with him less yeah i mean i would have to go back and really deep dive and see like okay well what what are you really saying? Like his theory was that you need to, your partner needs to just like see you dressed up and not see the process of you getting ready, I guess. And yeah, um, I disagree. Okay. And I think he goes back to another podcast we had spoken on about that, uh, shark tank product Yeah, where it was like, you press oh, yes, a button. Yeah. If the other, like, if you want to have sex, you press a button Yeah, yeah and then yeah. you, and, and if, if you both, both press it, a light uh-huh. comes on and then you have sex. It's like, okay, how miserable of a relationship if you can't be like one, truly comfortable with the other person. Yeah. Truly yeah. honest. Yeah. Um, so that led me into this like deep dive of like, okay, should you be naked in front of your spouse more or less? Yeah. Because we're naked in front of each other all the all time. All the time. And yeah. Yeah, like, you get off- remember, you get offended if I if you don't get, sleep naked. Yeah, if I don't Couples sleep. Couples are naked. meant to sleep naked yeah. with each other. Yeah. And uh I feel like our sex life is incredible. Yeah. So we definitely don't, I wouldn't, I mean, we're naked 
I mean, there's most Sundays we'll just be naked all day. Yeah. Yeah. There's been a, there's been, yeah. Well, not recently because we've had family. We here, have had family here. <laughs> it'd be a little weird, but. But we'll wake up, we'll go suntan outside naked, have yeah. our coffee while we're naked, come in, you'll yeah. open cards and play video games naked with your friends. Why do you have to make me sound like that? <laughs> it's nice. open cards <laughs> open naked. cards naked <laughs> but you look i mean i love it yeah i am a fan yeah i think it's incredible and i think that leads me to the point it's like okay you only cover something up if you're embarrassed by it yeah that's true right yeah. if you're embarrassed or you're trying to hide yeah i okay so if i'm gonna give like my honest like thought into it i <laughs> understand what the guy is saying it's like you know you listen to a, the same song over and over again you get tired of it or whatever i understand the the theory but mm -hmm. i don't i don't think that 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 works for every single couple i think it is a possibility for some couples mm -hmm. and stuff but like exactly with you and i don't agree at all because you know we're we uh i the bond between us is so much more than than just naked and just because yeah. we're naked in front of each other doesn't mean we're trying to turn each other on for sure it's yeah. like you can be completely open in yourself and naked yeah without any expectation uh exactly yeah and you know when we're in the mood then we're in the mood and yeah. then you play on to the nakedness but and i can always tell when you're in the mood <laughs> yeah there's yeah, no, hide it, no hiding it but uh uh <laughs> yeah that's so funny um but yeah no i i I understand what he's trying to say, and I get that that's probably something. It's like the teasing and the allure. Yeah, that. yeah, and I and that probably is something for some couples, but mm -hmm. yeah, definitely for us, not something that we. No, and that kind of got me into. So then I started doing research online. I went into this like spiral. By, by the way, too, <laughs> it's funny you said Sundays uh, will be or I'll be gaming naked or whatever yeah i get home from sparring today yep <laughs> you had blood just... pouring down your face still yeah and you're like oh the guys can the guys have an hour the guys have an hour so my my brother and then uh and then one of my best friends john you know they live in in alaska and so four hour difference so they get up mm -hmm. and game before work because uh you know they got time which is and, insane they're yeah. on, they're on at like 6 a.m their time yeah i mean so i i got done with sparring at like 10 45 this morning i biked there i was on my way back uh home and i had seen the bat signal had uh, we called the bat <laughs> signal but the bat signal had went up on my phone that they were getting on to play and so i was like oh how, how much time do you guys have and and uh hunter's like well i got until at least 8 15 and 8 15 a.m there so you know 12 30 here so i had like an hour and a half so mm -hmm. i bike biked home as fast as you could took my you shit off didn't even call me after practice that's no. how i know you were in a hurry yeah come in barely give me a kiss blood pouring down your face you didn't yeah. even talk about what happened no all of a sudden you're just naked with your <laughs> headset on <laughs> playing video games i'm gonna put the video up yeah Expose i had blood you. all over my chest everything you, you can't see anything so yeah. I'll, I'll put it in the podcast yeah. on youtube but. so anyways there's some truth behind the gaming naked yes there and, is yeah. some truth behind it so yeah. this led me into this deep dive about like okay why would someone not want to be naked in front of their spouse yeah and i have a statistic for you okay uh what percent of women don't feel comfortable getting naked in front of their partners oh this is interesting yeah. what percent of women don't feel comfortable gosh i would say i'm gonna i'm gonna say it's higher than what I'm thinking, I'm, I'm going to say 70%. You. Okay, so it doesn't, well, I, I may have jumped the gun on, okay. on you on that, but one in six women don't feel comfortable getting naked in front of their partners. Okay, so one in six would be... One in five would be 20%, so one in six would be... 15? 17? Let's circle back. Okay, we're going to come back to that one. We yeah. A little bit of math. One in, one in six... Uh, I think seven, I think 15, 30, 45... 60 75 90. 
Okay, there we go. 16.67. Okay. So, don't Crazy. feel comfortable getting naked in front of their partners. This is according to a recent UK study where okay. they polled nearly 2,000 adult women. According to the survey, 16% of those women polled had not gone all natural, had not been naked in front of their partners yeah. in more than a year. What? Yeah. That's insane. And then 45% of the women in the group cited a lack of confidence about their figures for being the reason. 30% it was d- due to a lack of sexual desire. Okay. 21% yeah. said they're so down on the way that they look that they don't even look at themselves naked. Jeez. Which, yeah. That's- so this is, uh, now this is UK, right? It is. I mean, I don't really know. The I don't difference. think there's a difference. Yeah, I just but, think that a lot of studies come out of the UK. Yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. So then Damn. I go and I'm like, geez, it's like an, a woman issue. So then I'm typing like a percent of men who don't feel comfortable in front of naked in front of women or yeah. like husbands, percent of husbands that feel insecure about being naked in front of their spouse. Yeah. You could not find a direct link to that whatsoever. Really? I would type those and it'd be like, uh, and you, you know, you type something on Google and then yeah, it's like the exact opposite. Yeah. Um, the articles that came up after I typed that in said, afraid to be naked in front of my husband. I'm too insecure to get naked in front of my boyfriend. Help. Why we never let our husband see us naked. 10 things he doesn't think about when he sees you naked. One in six women don't get naked in front of their partners. Crazy. I yes. never thought about this, but now, I mean, it makes sense though. I. It's gotta I be guess. a man issue too, or maybe that. Nah, I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think it's necessarily a man issue. I, I think, think well, it's the less security. Yeah, I think it's a female situation. Well, uh, I mean, I don't know if this is weird to say or not, but um, but are are females like are you are you insecure about being naked in front of like your mom or something like? Or, Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah. I think that brings up a whole other conversation. Well, I don't mean it like that, but you know, <laughs> no, no, like no, 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 that's are, not what I mean. Yeah. Like, so actually I feel my lack of confidence or my, and sorry, mom, this is going to get really childhood trauma or no oh, emotional. So not, not even. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like insecurities are, I feel like some insecurities are learned. Yeah. So when you grew up with parents who are constantly criticizing themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Constantly on a scale, constantly putting themselves down, embarrassed to change in front of their kids, won't be naked in front of their kids. It is a learned habit. Okay. So I grew up with mom, I love you, throwing you under the bus again, a mom who is very self-conscious. Yeah. And my mom yeah. looks fucking incredible. Y- your mom is in Re- amazing shape. My mom has a six pack basically yeah. and uh incredible shape. She could run a marathon Yeah, and she's 50. I mean, she's still young though. She's only 52. Yeah. Um, so I grew up though with a mom still extremely insecure with herself yeah. and her figure. So when I walk in on her naked, she'll like cover up and hide. I'm like, mom, I literally came out of your body. Yeah. You do yeah. not need to hide in front of me. Yeah. And then I was able to see like the way my friends acted with their moms. Like one of my very best friends growing up, her name was Alexa. Yeah. And her mom, I mean, would be naked in the house in front of me, just like so much more confident with her figure and her body. Yeah. And I was like, wow, you can actually like, it was just so much more comfortable like uh-huh. to not constantly criticize the way that you look. Yeah. So being myself, I want to like break those habits. Yeah. So I like found are these articles. This was, you know, a while ago. It's like, okay, if you want to be more comfortable being naked, stand in the mirror and look at yourself naked for 20 minutes or 10 minutes or five minutes, whatever. Funny. Just yeah. stand there and look at yourself naked. You're going to start to like what you see. It What's, you know, and of course this is, and uh, to... You know, I don't, uh, it's a different situation because mm-hmm. I work out for a living and stuff. And yeah. so I don't, I, you know, and I've been an athlete my entire life. So it's hard for me to comprehend and like, uh, fathom not like being able to look at yourself naked in the mirror and stuff. But, but. I can, I can relate to it because Easy. when I weigh in and when I fight, my fight weight is yeah. so different than what I look like in my walking around weight. Yeah. I 
I like it's like night and day. Yeah. So it's like I know what I used to look like and what I can look like and uh-huh. what I don't look like anymore. And obviously it also comes back to the sexualization of women on social media. Yeah. Um, that's why I love that guy, the goob I talked about, how he exposes these women like, oh, do this, buy my workout plan and you can look just like me. Yeah. And then he's like, uh, no, because they're all their pictures are edited. They're yeah. making their weight, they're pulling, snatching their waist in. They're making their butt bigger. Like girls can literally edit videos to snatch their waist in and make their butt bigger and uh-huh. change their curves and stuff. So yeah. I can definitely understand like the pressure and yeah yeah uh, me too it but gosh that is just yeah that sucks uh that's uh a situation like i just can't uh, again yeah and i can't the thought of you know being in a relationship where you know you're afraid to be naked in with front their of your spouse yeah so crazy. that's what i wanted to go with i'm just yeah. agreeing with what i saw on instagram with the relationship guy saying yeah you know, leave something up to the imagination or, you know, don't change in front of your spouse. Um, I say you should. Yeah. And I have advice on how to uh, be more comfortable with your spouse. This actually is why it is time to walk around naked. Okay. Nice. With your spouse. In yeah. Parentheses. And again, too, the other thing about me is <laughs> I am so uh, comfortable being naked. Like, yeah. I'm, I, like when we're out in our backyard, you know, there's probably spots where neighbors could probably see us, but I'm like, Whatever. I don't really if care. If they're looking in our yeah, backyard, if, if it's they're on looking, them. Then, <laughs> then, yeah, I guess it's on them. And I don't, I'm not really like, you know, of course I'm not going to go and spo- expose myself in front of yes. fucking, yeah. But we but, built 15 foot privacy hedges for a reason. Yeah. Cause... I, I've just, I've never, uh, you know, I was the kid running around our house naked and, high heels to be a joker <laughs> funny guy <you laughs> nice. know, so I, yeah i'm just not yeah. no yeah. all right so this is why it's time to walk around naked with your spouse okay one to build physical intimacy oh, okay and that's the thing you want yeah. your partner to like be more intimate with you put it all out there yeah so this is that that would definitely be opposite of what this other yes, guy was I saying. Yes, I say put it all out there. And this is an article. I didn't type this. Okay. I, I found yeah. this article online. Yeah. Um, the six pillars of intimacy the, are the foundation of an extraordinary marriage. They yeah. include emotional, physical, financial, spiritual, recreational, and sexual intimacy. Yeah. Intimacy is, ju- is more than just sex. It's important to prioritize all six pillars because they provide beauty and strength to your marriage. Anyways, and it goes into, you know, all the reasons being naked builds physical intimacy, which yeah. I feel are very self-explanatory. Yeah. Um, two, be true to yourself and your spouse or okay. be your true self around your spouse. Okay. A hundred percent. Yeah. If you can't be your real self in front of the, your spouse, like. Yeah. Then. Then you're just not comfortable with the other person. Yeah. And I think that's the issue because I, that in my opinion is what, uh, is what a uh, authentic, real relationship mm-hmm. should be is you can be your 100% self. You can be naked playing fucking video games yeah. and, you know. And, nerding and, out on some football nerding cards. Out on some cards and, and uh, uh, no, all jokes aside that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the otherwise why... Yeah, why would you want to be in a relationship so, and be and, like shackled? Yeah, to put it even in better words, they write, nakedness requires vulnerability. In okay. order to feel comfortable naked around your spouse, you have to create an environment where you feel safe. Yeah. The only way to make this happen is by communicating openly and honestly with each other. Yeah, what about what about when you're naked and your partner uh, constantly is like, Poking your butthole. Poke, yeah, poking your balls and <laughs> <Wiggle>. <laughs> doing stuff like that. Is there anything? I do get in trouble I'm not for that. saying that you do that, but yeah. I do get in trouble. Then I'll notice if I play with you too much, you'll go put underwear on. <laughs> yeah. No, but there's like sometimes, yeah, I'll be, you know, we'll be naked or whatever. We'll, uh, I'll be doing, I'll be in the fridge looking for something and she like crawls on the <laughs> ground and is like poking my ball like okay babe you know that doesn't really feel that good <laughs> and so and yes then your underwear go on yeah i'm fine yeah okay yeah i'll, I'm, I'll put it away yep I, it's my favorite it's taken, toy. A, it's taken what away what do you expect from me <laughs> it's taken away 
Rude. Uh, okay, withholding sex is a form of torture. Okay, I'm not withholding it, but <laughs> I'm just asking, hey, maybe, you know, don't prod my testicles. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Hey, once I stop touching it, you're going to be really sad. Yes, I know. She does say that too. <laughs> That's, yes. Yeah. You're going to miss, really miss you're this. You're going to really miss this. You're... Um, <laughs> yeah, well, guess what? What? Well, I wasn't going to say something, but. Say it. It'd be mean. <laughs> say it. Remember, you are 30 and you're not a 20 year old. <gasps> so you you better tread lightly. Yeah. If you're, if you're Trevor Lawrence cards somehow I'm disappear, kidding. it wasn't me. I'm kidding. Uh, okay. Back to my article. Well, I'm getting better looking with age. Now so. that I'm getting scrutinized. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To switch up foreplay. Okay. There, uh, let's be honest. One of the first things that attracted you to your spouse was their physical presence. Yes. Uh, intellect, emotions, and behavior aside, physical attraction helps fuel passion. Emphasis on the intellect for me. I get Sure. It. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't we talk about a one podcast? I think I'm smarter than you are. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When you walk around naked with your spouse, you facilitate and possibly even ignite that attraction. Okay. Yeah, even when it subsides over the years, the form of foreplay can lead to a new and creative way to initiate sex. Yeah. Foreplay is a crucial piece of sexual intimacy, babe. Foreplay. Yeah. Okay. We, are, we okay. need foreplay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. FYI. Yeah. <laughs> Alongside Roman. Wow. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I just feel like to Okay. A little foreplay would be All nice. Right. All right. And, and me poking it that's not foreplay that's just fun <laughs> yeah what the hell is that <laughs> okay <sighs> here's some ways you can easily get or stay naked before or after you shower i don't know uh, oh uh, this is think, dumb yeah. okay that got a little weird yeah. just take your clothes off yeah, honestly just take your damn clothes off, just take your damn clothes off. <laughs> so that was my article on why i think you should be naked more crazy okay. and somehow totally then it led me to revealing divorce statistics in 2024 oh jeez. oh well let me hear it i went on a crazy tangent i feel like this all tied in i don't know why i went yeah. to oh just um i guess you need to feel comfortable in front of your partner this was sad though because then i'm like reading and on this like long podcast prepping session yeah. um oh let me go back to my note Okay, there we I go. mean, we're already uh, listening to this. This what? is crazy. I just came up with this in my mind. We're already like a quarter of the way done with 2024. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. It seems like it was just. It just started. Right? It feels like January it was January just... 1st, all January, all February. We're at the end of March. Yeah. Damn. It feels okay, like so it's we still... only need to make three more quarters <laughs> not to get divorced in 2024. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, what happened in 2019? Literally, like, I feel like I blinked in it. It yeah, blinked in 2019 and it's 2024. It's crazy. Um, I was looking up divorce statistics. Okay. Um, because I felt like it tied into, like, being comfortable around your spouse. And this yeah, and yeah, that. yeah. Um, did you know divorce roommate? Okay. I'm going to ask you another question. Okay. Ask me. What are the divorce rates among pro athletes? Oh, geez. I would say uh, so. And who do you think has what, what sport has the highest? Okay. Divorce nice. rate? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, divor so like percentage percentage. Okay. I would say pro athletes probably have a 70% divorce rate. Pro athletes, this is according to a law firm. Okay. Divorce rates among pro athletes are 60 to 80%. Damn, okay. I was mm -hmm. right in the middle. I was yep. probably right on. I, and the, <laughs> the, oh gosh, I would, it's got to be, it's got to be NBA or NFL players. Pick one. NFL. No. NBA. Yes. Yep. What do you think the divorce rate for NBA players is? Uh, <laughs> 85%. 87%. Damn. 87% of NBA Damn. players are divorced within five years of getting married. No. Within five years. So that's why when I had all oh. these basketball players sign into my DM, <laughs> not even going to happen. Yeah. I wish I could say something. Don't them, but I'm say it. Yeah. Anyways. It just pumps me up. Mm. It makes me feel so good. <laughs> Yes, and when I googled your name, there wasn't a ton of um, 
uh, what was the word I'm looking for? Scandals. Oh, oh okay. Scandals. Oh. <laughs> this is a funny Just thing a I did. Just scattering rubbish. Yes. When I was single. Charge. So when I was single and I would have, um, you know, bigger named people sliding into my DMs. Yep. The first thing I would do if I wanted to respond is I would Google their name and then type scandal at the end of it. Mm. And then it would tell me everything I needed to know. So I Googled one of them and it was like, does so-and-so have six baby mamas with six different kids? Oh, cripes. <laughs> Yeah. And I think it was true, actually. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. So, yes, we do have to work hard in our marriage. Yes. Um, Because divorce rates for professional athletes are so high. Yeah, but that's I, within five years within, is your statistic. That's true. And yeah. we've been married we've over five years. That. Yeah. Actually, it'll be five and a half years tomorrow. Yeah. So we we beat the stats. Beat the stats. Um, And then it kind of goes into, of course, I don't know if... MMA fighters are a part of that statistic. It's yeah. a little different. I, it is. It's, uh, I don't, yeah, I would think MMA fighters, the rate is a lot lower. See, I'm trying, I'm thinking of like notable MMA fighters with a, with a spouse. And I can't think of a, I can't even really think of a single one that's been divorced. No, it, as far as the married professional athletes that are professional fighters i know yeah they've all been with their spouses for a long period of time yeah so at least i mean and then there's it also goes into like the people you surround yourself with yeah like for sure people who have married friends are more likely to stay married and oh really okay. yeah if you're yeah, that makes sense. Or, or, or i guess the way he they phrased it was like people who have divorced friends are more likely to get divorced that makes sense too um yeah. it also says though in fact, the average, this is from Forbes, by the way. Okay. Um, Forbes.com. The average length of a marriage prior to divorce is eight years. Oh, damn. Okay. Yes. So we got to make it to eight years. Okay. I, and I always thought the saying used to be seven. seven I thought it was years, seven too. Yeah, whereas like if you can make it to seven years of marriage, then you're set. So it's changed. 2024, it's eight. But I think that's positive because marriage averages are getting bigger long okay. like like because it used to be seven years like the yeah average divorce rate ranges around seven years now yeah. it's people are staying together a little longer okay nice um yeah. divorce rates uh the divorce rate has decreased okay. in 2024 awesome for us uh <laughs> third marriages do have the highest divorce rate though which makes a lot of sense uh, third marriages have the highest divorce rate. yeah okay so you, 70 73 percent damn yeah See that, yeah, that surprises me. I would think by the time you're on your third marriage, you're just like, uh, you know, if you're gonna get married, it's like, all right, this Fuck is it, the let's just do it. Yeah, I'm not gonna do this shit again. Funny fact: six percent of divorced couples remarry each other. Six percent? Yes. Really? Remarry each other. Dang. Okay. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, so you all you want that you you always talk about wanting to get married again. I guess we could just get divorced. Yeah. And then... We get divorced. I get to get another wedding dress. Yeah. And just do it one more time. Yeah. I found some really pretty wedding dresses that I really want to buy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So can I have that. another ring? We got that in our back pocket. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I want to big one yeah yeah there's some there's some <laughs> things that i'm gonna definitely uh change when we what <laughs> i'm kidding what? i'm kidding i'm kidding are we gonna set like you're signing that prenup no <laughs> i'm kidding no don't make me sign it <laughs> okay i have some more fun facts i just yeah. these are kind of funny uh it's just funny the kind of polls that they have yeah. and like the stats. Uh, divorcees are more likely to die earlier than married people. Oh, okay. Probably depression. Yeah. Actually, divorce. Stress. Divorced men. No. Stress. No, divorced people are more likely to die than married. So are divorced yeah, people I mean. more stressed out? Or they're stressed yeah, from think the about, divorce? Think about the divorce that you've recently been a part of in the stress in the yikes shitty but yeah. divorced men bear the brunt of this increased risk okay so that's sad yeah stressful yeah. yeah um all right let me continue oh yeah having friends who are divorced divorced increases your risk okay the most common okay this is what it got me to yeah what are the most common reasons for divorce and i felt like that played into them being naked with each other 
Um, Lack, uh, loss of sexual intimacy. That's high. Okay. But it is not the first one. Finances. No, <laughs> okay. actually. Okay. All right. These are the top reasons for divorce. So that uh, finances weren't one of the top It is ones. not. No, it is, but it's okay. not number one. Okay. Um. Okay. Top reasons. Oh, infidelity. Number two. Infidelity is two. Number two. Can you guess number one? Lack of, lack of sexual interest. No. Um. Straight up lack of commitment. Really? Yeah. Lack of commitment. Okay. Number one. Like not committed to the partner. They're just not committed to the partner or the relationship. Can't commit to being with the person. Crazy. Lack of commitment causes divorce. Okay. Uh, number two, infidelity. Yes. Or external affairs. Yeah. Number three, too much conflict or arguing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That I mean, a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. I I had just recently, it was, I believe it was a an athlete and the reason for divorce. Because I'm assuming when you file for divorce, you have to give a, a reason. reason. And I it, was, so. it was in irreconcilable differences or something. Yeah. And so. okay. So before I read the rest of these, I do want to yeah. set a precedence for everyone. I think, yeah. I think it's good that we're in an era. If you're with a spouse, you're not happy with one. I don't yeah. think you should give up on a relationship, but you also shouldn't be forced to stay with that person. Oh, for sure. And divorce yeah. shouldn't be as frowned upon as it used to be. I know my mom, I, I just so my mom's parents were divorced when she was ex- like nine months old. So yeah. she was one of the only people in her school that had divorced parents. Yeah. And she was relentlessly made fun of for it, for not having parents who were together. Yeah. So I I agree and I disagree. I mm-hmm. I believe the frowned uponness of it all is to discourage people into not shotgun weddings, but discourage people into marrying without being sure and and committed and stuff and and all that so um you know in a sense i do but uh, but also we know that people change over time Mm -hmm. and and all that and so you know then there is that aspect of it that yeah you're not married to the same partner you were married to when you guys i mean now which is crazy we both have divorced parents and completely different it, like completely different ways yours yeah. were separated after just a few years or... yeah yeah i think five years maybe like five years my parents were married for 30 years yeah so it's interesting to see like and i can honestly say i'm happy i'm so happy my parents got separated yeah and me too i mean i the only reason i am happy is because it did all end up working out yeah. you know in the end and and uh you know, and I love my stepdad and I love my siblings that came from him. Mm-hmm. And, and then, uh, but then also that my, my parents were able to bury, you know, all that stuff and become yeah. friends and good friends with each other and, you know, all that. So, yeah. And yeah. I don't, I'm not saying divorce should be encouraged whatsoever, but yeah. in cases of like domestic violence situations, like, just don't feel like you have to stay. Yeah, no, there's def- there is or a lot infidelity. of infidelity. Yeah, don't the- feel like you have to stay just yes. because you made the commitment. Yeah, yeah, there is a lot of yeah. To your point, there's a lot of circumstances where yeah, divorce is I think the right decision. Yes. But again, I think it is so frowned upon because they're, we're trying to discourage people and to mm-hmm. getting married, you know, without being without being truly committed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's go back to my list. Kay. So. Uh, Top reasons for divorce, lack of communication or lack of commitment. Yeah. Infidelity, too much conflict. Number three, uh, four, getting married too young. Oh, yeah. That that's a good one. And that I believe is my parents issue. Yes. They got married way too young. Yeah. Um, I mean, think they're, you know. They're young. Anyways. Um, No, they got married too young. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Financial problems. Okay. Substance abuse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Domestic. I know. And I know some situations yep. there. So. Substance abuse, domestic violence, lack of support from family. Oh, okay. And then the other few, two, I'm a little bit um, <laughs> unsure about health problems, religious differences. I feel like you should go into it. That's yeah. Already prepare. Yeah. yeah. And then little to no premarital education. Okay. Which yeah. 
I'm confused by that one as well because yeah. I feel like you learn how to be married when you're married. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's probably... I think probably some of it becomes overwhelming and, you know, and people are, yeah. Yeah. Well, but, sorry, I just took us on this like crazy divorce <laughs> tangent. Yeah. Well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> let's, uh, won't, why don't we lighten the mood with, uh, you get, get your little gift from. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Pause because then I have another mood lightener. Okay. Um, cool. um, I'm going to go grab it first. Okay. We're back. Okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Well, I'm back. You're back. Would you mind moving our baby? Because yep. I don't want to hit him in the face. Come here, buddy. I got an incredible package. This company is based out of, um, I believe, Oregon. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's kind of loud. And it is from 10 Barrel Brewing Company. Ooh. They sent me a party in a box, and I'm really excited to see what they sent me. This is so cool. they have been one of my favorite uh, beverage companies yeah. as far as like sours. And they make a cucumber sour that is to die for. Yeah. I had it for the first time in Alaska with your sister. Yep. She's the one who put me on them. And I could not find them in Florida. So I ordered a few cases online. Yeah. And I DM'd them. I'm like, hey, when are you guys going to come to Florida? And then then they were like, oh my gosh, like good, big fan. So they yeah. sent, sent us a care package. Oh, so um, cool. I'm going to save the really good stuff for here in a second. Okay. Okay, let's see. Also, thank you to 10 Barrel for my party in a box. Uh, 10 Barrel, I think that's a teaser, an AMF. Oh, dang. I got a little uh, dang, hydro, oh, hydro okay, flask. Yeah, yeah. Is well, that what everyone's going crazy over now? These little... Uh, uh, that's a, the hydro flasks. Okay, but the tumblers, yeah. AMF. Oh, Do you remember wow. drinking AMFs? Yes, in I high do. In, in high, high school. <laughs> wow. In college? No, I remember going to the, the uh, yeah, the bar scene in college and like, all right, what's the strongest drink in AMF? AMF. Yeah. They made AMFs that you can buy in the can. Damn. AMF. And then what, is, what are they? 13%? 13%. Okay. 13.9% on a disco lemonade. 13.9 on that? 13.9. So no, AMF. that one's 13.9 as well. Oh, is that? Okay. Yeah. 13.9 disco lemonade and an AMF. Damn. Let's see what else they sent me. Ooh, a cool little party shirt. Oh, hell yeah. That'll be great for Florida. Yeah. Oh, there's my card. Oh, yay. Get your party started with 10 barrels, all new, high octane canned cocktails, AMF and disco lemonade. Damn. That is so cool. Okay. And this is a precursor to the the uh, new uh, drink. This is a precursor too. to my new show. So yep. next week, I'm going to be filming my first episode of a kick-ass co kick cocktails. Yep. Um. All right. Ooh, wireless speaker. Oh, damn. Let's damn, see. You got hooked up. I know. Uh. Oh my gosh. Mace? No. <laughs> Whip, whipped cream. <laughs> oh, no, wait. okay. <laughs> no. Whipped sunscreen. Oh, cool. Okay. Do not eat that. I won't. Whipped yeah. sunscreen. That's awesome. Yeah, I thought that was Mace from this. Oh my gosh. So no, oh, dang. Me mace. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, pull these out. Some Smith sunglasses. Oh, dang. I'm wearing those for sure. Okay, here you yeah. go. Those are cool. Yeah, those are cool. Okay, well, thank you so much to Tan and Barrel Brewing Company for my gift. It's only right that we try one on the podcast okay. so you guys get yeah. to know if I like them or not. And if yeah. These are what I remember. Uh, An from, AMF tasting like? From college. Yeah. From when I was 21. Dang, I love these sunglasses still. Oh, it smells good. Does it? Yeah, it does smell good. Okay, try it. Oh, yeah, that'll get you right. Mm -hmm. Will it? Vodka, rum, gin, and tequila. Oh, it's got the... <laughs> mm hmm Okay, let's try it. Oh, that's good. Mm. That... That's... Yep, that's an AMF. <laughs> it smells just like an AMF. Does it? That you, I remember. You didn't drink as many AMFs as I did. That was my drink when I was in college. <laughs> I, I didn't go to did. college I just when don't, I was college age. I, I, I probably did. I just don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then we have the Disco Lemonade Vodka with Natural Flavors. Okay. Oh, that's really good. And you're certainly going to drink both of these and not waste them, right? <laughs> I will put them in the fridge until after boxing. Good. These are... 
These are both really strong. <laughs> I yeah, know. those are both really oh, strong. Wow. wow. Okay, well, thank you, 10 Barrel Brewing. I am going to save these. I got to go to boxing. Yeah. One, one last one more, one more sip. Yeah, one more sip. I was wanting to go to boxing a little drunk, see yeah. if it loosened me up a bit. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a kick ass love story podcast. Yes. Lots of love, lots of nudity, a little bit of alcohol. A little bit of kick acidness. A little bit of kick ass, you and your bloody nose. Yeah, I didn't bleed on my shirt, which is nice. No, which is really good. But yeah. come back next week. We are live every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time on uh, YouTube, OFTV, iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify, Deezer, anywhere you get your podcasts. Yeah. And stay tuned because I will be filming kick ass cocktails with Paige Van Zant, and that will be live on most of the same platforms. Yeah. Awesome. Come back and get drunk with me. Yeah, yeah. Woo. Mm.